this chapter or this video series will start off with uh, electric fields. And if you've recalled, we, this is not the first time you stared at electric fields, right? You have seen it in your AS. Uh, we mainly talk about parallel plates and stare at all the weird, weird shapes in your electric field lines. So if you kind of don't really remember because it feels that very far away, AS was a long time ago, you might want to refresh a bit. But here, we're going to focus on what happens when the fields are not uniform. Because the thing about parallel plate is the electric field is the same everywhere. Ah, if the electric field is the same everywhere, then it's very easy because then the force is constant, the acceleration is constant, and the work done is very easy to find. But guess what? In A2, these two things ain't constant. So here is an example of two-point charges. And uh, let's observe how they interact or exert force on each other. Okay, so if you remember, right, once upon a time, you see point charges, they have a whole electric field. But what happens when you bring two point charges together? This is what we're looking at. So currently, if you look at the charge of the first one on the left, is okay. zero mu coulomb. Charge mm -hmm. two, also zero. So no charge got any force or not. You see the force? Zero, zero, zero. No charge, no force. What if we try to increase the charge of one of them? Okay, so positive charge for, eh, still no force, or you see up there, 0, 0.0 newton, 0, 0.0 newton. Why, ah? Uh, got charge, leh. Why no force, force one? So in order to have an electric force, uh, you need both particles also should have charge. So let's mm. change the other particle's charge mm. to some number. Maybe positive 6. Ah, now you see up there. Now there is a force on Q1 by Q2, there's a force on Q2 by Q1, and notice how the numbers are the same for both of them. I push you, you push me. Q1 push Q2, Q2 push Q1, Q1 push Q2. This is just a representation. Uh. There's no tiny mannequin here pushing the charges, okay? Try increase the charge all the way maximum and see if you can make the force bigger. Okay, no. Oh, you increase one side also, both still same force. Increase, increase. Ah, now you can start to see the force arrow already, the white color one on top. Mm. So that's a force on Q2 by Q1. So something here you can take away is, the bigger the charge on, I guess, either one of them, the bigger the force that will act on either one of them. And that's the first one. Bigger charge, what? bigger force. Mm. What if you got negative charge on me? Can make one of them negative, you see what happened? So neutral, negative, oi! Now you see the force arrow direction has changed. One, they are pointing towards each other, which means this is what we call an attractive electric force. I like you, you like me, we are pulled towards each other. Okay, so you can, it's still the same thing, right? okay, the mm. bigger the charge, magnitude, the bigger the force, and you can see the arrows are now pointing towards each other. Yeah. Attractive, just now was repulsive. Yeah, and, and even for charge. repulsive, the magnitude is the same, 2.67. 2.67 Okay, now another thing we can experiment is these two charges are a certain distance away from each other What if we change the distance between them? Eh? Maybe we drag one of them closer Notice how the force have changed Wow, the arrow becomes so big Means what is happening? The force is greater Right? The values Much are bigger to me, yeah. mm. 10 to the power of 3 now yeah, so this is one thing to note also. When you decrease the distance between charges, they will push or attract each other even more. Mm. So this is the case where one is positive, one is negative. Yeah. So they will attract. And it doesn't matter which one you pull. We only care about their separation. And also, the magnitude is always the same. Because mm -hmm. Newton's third law. Equal magnitude, opposite direction. Same type of forces electric force and uh, acting on different bodies okay so with all these observations in mind now we have to put it together into an equation mm -hmm. let's go and see what this equation will be and who named it after themselves okay so here's the notes let's look at all the ideas you observe but now we put it in sentences words and equations okay let's go mm -hmm. So here you can see two, the two point charges, Q1 and Q2. To make our lives easier, let's assume they are both positive and they will repel each other likewise. So we're going to label the forces first. This is F21 and F12, which denotes 
the force acting on Q1, F21, and the force acting on Q2, F12. All right. So if you are a bit lost in your own notes, you might actually want to write force of charge 2 on charge 1, like the simulation just now. But we're going to make our life easy and just stick with F21 and F12. So both of those these forces have equal magnitude. And we know this from Newton's third law. All right. So we're going to write about the two key relationships that we have noticed in the simulation. The first one being that this force is proportional to the product of the charges. So you notice that uh, whether I increase the charge on the left or the charge on the right, the force will increase together, right? And the second observation is when I bring the charges closer, the force will become stronger. So there's an inverse relationship here, and it is the square of the inverse relationship. So now to put it in a sentence, we, or put it together, we can say F is proportional to Q1, Q2, which is the uh, product of the point charge over R squared, which is the square of their separation. But you know all these proportional signs, not nice for mathematics. Huh? So we need to introduce a constant. Okay, So introducing the constant, this will be K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. All right. But what is this constant K? So for electric fields, and the derivation for this will remain unknown until university, mm. K is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. <laughs> Miss, why like that? University. Now Too you just use that. Right. Too just many I, things. K, la, K, just K. K. Mm. So it's 8.99 times 10 to the power 9. This is given in your uh, formula and your data sheet. So epsilon naught is known as the relative permit Permittivity of free space. So free space here means vacuum. Relative permittivity is, is how much did how much did the surrounding allows the point charge to set up an electric field. That is permittivity. Does the surrounding permit you to set up an electric field? So the relative permittivity of free space. So these are all physical constant that was determined experimentally, and you are given this, you you can choose to use 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9, which is the whole thing, or you can choose to use 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. All right? So now we're going to write that proportionality relationship. But before I go, maybe we need to give force a unit just to remind ourselves, okay, like a good physics student that force has the unit of newtons. And it's a factor. So the direction matters. Sometimes we will add the magnitude, sometimes we will subtract the magnitude, especially if there's more than two point charges involved. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now we're going to write that the Coulomb's law in the sentence, which is essentially a formal statement of the equation that we've looked at just now, where the force between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of its charges, of their charges. Okay. And inversely proportional to the square of their separation. Okay, this definition is normally two marks. You might be thinking, oh, miss, I know, one sentence is one mark. No, 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 no. The directly proportional, inversely proportional, that whole thing is one mark. The idea that this is an interactive force between two point charges is the other mark. So you never mention point charge or you will lose one mark. Mm. So make sure you mention point charge, okay? Because means what do you mean if it's not point charge? Well, if it's not point charge, for example, like you have your Van de Graaff generator, remember? You know, the, the thing, like a big metal dome, and then you put there, your hair will fly one. So if you, <laughs> if you yeah. have this one, the charge distribution is not really like a point charge. So this is only yeah, applicable yeah. if all the charge, let's say 10 nano coulomb, yeah. is all concentrated on one single point. But normally charge distribute across a 3D body, no, right? I, I, I so that one will be the next part of our lecture. So that's why the condition of point charge is important when you write a statement for Coulomb's law. Okay, the second thing about using this equation is because it's a vector, even if the polarity of the sign has a negative, you do not substitute a negative into the equation. Okay? And this is because you need to draw vector diagrams. You need to see the angle and how the forces interact with each other. 
So that's one thing. Because sometimes students, you might have a, let's say I put negative Q2 there and you might be thinking, oh, now the force is negative. But whenever I see a negative sign in force, I will think about direction. Okay. So in this case, the direction does not matter. You need to don't substitute the sign, draw the vector diagram or map out the direction of all the forces. We will do some examples. All right. So I think the last, what remains is just to remind you that the inverse square relationship looks like this. Force will decrease as we travel further and further away. So if let's say I fix Q1 on the R equal to zero position and I increase the value of R, the interactive forces or the repulsion force between Q1 and Q2 will decrease as shown in the graph. Okay, so that is uh, Coulomb's law. Here, we have a pretty familiar simulation if you watch our AS video, uh -huh. where if I park a point charge in the middle, park, look at all the beautiful lines. Huh? Miss mm -hmm. Ellie, what does the line show? So you remember very carefully, uh, these lines are what we call the uh, electric field lines. So if this is a positive charge, oh, it means all the lines are, the arrows are pointing away from this charge. Remember? Some AS stuff. Okay. So that is for a positive charge. You can show mm -hmm. the direction. But if you want to show the electric field strength, I guess you could put a test charge. Mm -hmm. Also known as a sensor in this place. place. So the yellow is like, the yellow point charge is a positive test charge. And the thing about drawing these lines is because we need to be able to visualize the field, right? If you cannot visualize the field, then it'll be hard to study. Mm -hmm. So we know that at certain position, if I were to pack another positive charge, these two charges will repel each other. You see this red arrow? is repelling or running away from the positive charge. But if yeah. we move them closer, the red arrow will become bigger, indicating a stronger field. So you can see the field is stronger, closer, and the field is weaker. But the strength of this field depends on two things, right? Besides the distance, it also depends on how strong this yellow charge is. Mm -hmm. If I want to measure these uh, white color lines or white color field, I would like it to be independent of my sensor. That is good science. The thing that you use to measure the thing will not affect the thing that you're measuring. Just a sensor only, la, test charge. Ah, so the test charge cannot catch out or cannot disturb positive charge. That's why when we talk about how strong the field is at this point, we will take the magnitude of the force, which is the red arrow, divide by the charge of the yellow charge. I mean, of the yellow test charge. <laughs> So that's the electric field that you look at just now. Let's go back to writing it down. A uh, reminder of what electric field strength is. See, E field strength. So the definition is a, a old one. Electric force per unit positive test charge. Emphasis on the positive test charge. Okay, because we don't want to be bothered by what the test charge is. We just want to know how strong is the field strength then. So if you remember a little bit, how does... Electric field strength and force relate. That means your electric field is the force. Force is the same as uh, F1, 2, F2, 1, so I uh, never mind. Uh. So force over Q. But which E and which Q is this all? You have to be very careful. Because mm. this particle on the left side has a field. Let's say this green color field. Like I draw all the arrow like that. Lo. Particle on the right side also have a field. So whose field are we using? Who? What, what are we looking at? Remember, we want to study the charge on the left. Because the charge on the right, we want to only use this to measure the field strength. Oh, we call this uh, E field strength uh, of Q1. So remember which E are using? I think there was an AS question of this, so remember that. Okay, so we are using the E field strength of 1, so this one will be E1 uh, to show that, oh, I want to measure the green color field. Now, you are using what charge to test? You're using Q2. So this one, you must label Q2. The F doesn't matter, though. F2, 1, F1, 2, same thing already. So from here, you can remember that, oh, if what is F, uh, you can scroll up. Well, I will scroll up, and you look at this Coulomb's law. Q1, Q2 over R2, ah, you can sub that in. And we see if we can cancel out the Q2. 
So F here will be KQ1, Q2. That is the force between these two charges. Can be F21 or F12. Same lah. Over R squared. Divide by the whole thing, which is Q2. Not Q squared, ah, Q2. Then you notice very nice, you can cancel out some stuff. If you notice here, Q2 and Q2 will cancel out. Once in the numerator above, once the denominator below. So if I want to measure the electric field strength, I can do this fast last final line where I know the electric field strength of charge number 1, which is what I want to measure, this green color yep. one. That will be equal to just K Q1 over R squared. Now this thing is beautiful, you know why? Because there is no Q2 at all in the equation. I don't yes. care what Q2 is, I just want to know what is the electric field strength of this one charge Q1. So this mm -hmm. is the general formula for testing yes. or knowing what is the electric field strength of one charge. Yes. So whenever we look at field strengths, right, it's always about force per unit something. Because to know how strong the field is, we will divide by the quantity that causes the force to be in the first place. You will see more of this in magnetic fields. It also will be force per unit something else. Yep. Yeah. What's the unit for E? Oh, unit for E got so many there. Eh? <laughs> what are our units? So one of the first one is base is related to forces. So if we scroll mm -hmm. up a little bit, here we already talked about forces, ma force, force, force. You can relate one. force to electric field by mm -hmm. saying that oh, we just defined that uh electric uh, force per unit positive charge test charge. So you can look at your old equation F equals to Q E, or you can mm -hmm. say that E is force per unit positive. F over Q. F over Q. Or you can go the other way, law. You want to find this one, also can F equals Q E. Mm -hmm. The same thing, lah. Just rearrange a bit. So if you want to find the unit, or you see here F over Q, so Newton per Coulomb is the first one. N C negative one. It's another one, or that one comes from the understanding of uniform parallel plates. Mm. Kind of. Kind of. So if you remember, potential difference divided by plate separation. The old one, ah, uh, they got two plate. Ah. You got a certain potential difference from let's say here zero to V, a certain separation distance D. What mm -hmm. you do? Volts per meter. So that's a possible other unit for this one. Yeah. Later, later in somewhere in the middle of this study, we will go full cycle, and then you will encounter this again volt per meter and why volt per meter is a unit that makes sense for electric field strength. Last thing to wrap up this whole section is the graph to remind you again of how it would look like if you plot the electric field strength of a, this particle, green color one, and mm -hmm. how far you are away from it. So if your positive test charge is here, what is the field strength? If you it's move closer, what's the field strength? Ah. Inverse square also. Huh? 1 over R. Eh? Why I got R? Oh, R? 1 over R. So it's pretty much the same as your force graph here. Like mm. that. Inverse square, ah, yeah, all the inversely proportional one, all the shape also roughly like that one. Yeah. Okay, so that is yeah. how you can think of electric field strength. They're yes. all different things. Yes, so please don't use V over D anymore. That's only for uniform parallel, uh, uniform electric field between two parallel plates. So don't uh, use, right. don't, don't V over D. Oh, I should write a reminder. Unless you see parallel plate in the picture or they tell you it's parallel plate for some reason. Miss parallel plate, they got us in A2. There was one anomalous year. I don't know why they asked, but they got us. So just keep that in mind. This is for point charges. The field is not uniform. If you remember the simulation we showed you just now, where all the arrows pointing out one, right? The force is not the same. You go further away from the arrow, closer to the arrow. The field strength is all different. All right. So... Yala, parallel plate is uniform field strength. This one, yes. not uniform. Closer Point you are, charges. the stronger the field. But the definition F equal to QE can be used for both parallel plates and point charges. Okay. Okay, so that's all for electric field strength.